Hey guys, welcome back to Paracord Planet. Today is an exciting day. We have finally made the adjustable dog collar strap that we've been talking about for a while. That is right here. We beefed it up even a little bit from the design that we showed in our last dog collar video. So this is the one that we made in that video. And in this one, we've improved the buckle a little bit. It's a locking buckle. So if you would push that switch, you can't undo it, which is helpful for dogs that like to pull. And then on this end, instead of an O-ring, we now have a D-ring. So that should stay in place on the webbing a little bit better. And the webbing on here too, I should mention, is heavier duty than on a lot of dog collars that you buy in the store. So in addition to our new adjustable strap, you'll also need some paracord. So I've got two different colors here and the cord requirements will depend on what weave you're making. Today we're doing the King Cobra, like this one right here. It's a great beginner weave that just really looks great. It's a classic. And for this one, I have an eight inch weaved portion. And for that, we're gonna need about 10 feet of each color. Actually, this one ended up being exactly 10 feet, so I would recommend leaving a foot extra on the end of that. And then we're also gonna be using a paracord jig. This one is a 30 inch, and it's gonna be plenty long for our collar today. And it just holds things nice and steady while doing our time lapse on camera. But if you're making any more than one or two of these dog collars, then I would definitely suggest picking up a jig. So with that, let's dive into our project. So when you're setting up your jig, there's a couple things to keep in mind. First is that if you're making this particular project, none of our jigs come with a full one inch buckle on the jig already. And so you'll want to pick up an extra one of these buckles. And you can find that in our store. Second, the length of our collar is not going to be the length of our paracord weave. That's just going to be part of it. So if you look at the one that I've made here already, I've got an eight inch woven portion with about a 15 inch full length to the collar. So I'm going to set this up at 15. That's a great medium size for a dog. If you're making this collar for a particular dog that you can measure the neck of, I would suggest making your entire collar exactly that length and then leaving your webbing strap at a place where you can either tighten or loosen it before you get started. That way it's sure to fit in the end. So I'm going to clip this into my jig. We'll have to extend this out a ways. And to keep this webbing part out of the way, I'm just going to put it down through the D-ring and out this direction. So now I want to measure from the end of my D-ring here to the other end of my buckle and I'm gonna make another eight inch one. So that should be eight inches. And because this collar is designed for bigger dogs, we wanna make sure that it's gonna hold up to a lot of pulling power. So in setting up my King Cobra, I'm gonna have a four strand core rather than the typical two. So we'll get that ready now. The first step in making sure that things are sturdy is joining our two cords in a way that's not gonna pull apart. So we're gonna be using the Manny method. If you haven't seen that before, we'll do it here, but we also have a dedicated video on that topic. So we'll take out some fids. Maybe I should have included that in the supplies. For beginners, paracord fids are a needle that you can screw onto the end of your paracord. So I'm gonna screw it onto our blue right here. You just wanna make sure that you have a melted end first so that it has something to hold onto. It's got screw threads on the inside there. And then on our other one, I'm actually gonna cut a fresh end that is not melted. And just to keep that from fraying, I will just hit it with the lighter very briefly. Then with our fid, we're gonna poke it into the paracord about a half inch from the end, and then push it out the end until the paracord comes through. Now we've gotta find the other end of both of those colors and do the same thing, except in reverse. So here my blue is going into the red. And if I find the other ends, take my fit off. In the other end, I want to do the opposite. So we'll thread our fit onto the red end. Make sure we have a decently fresh end on the blue and do the same thing in reverse. If this doesn't look perfect in the end, that's okay. It's all gonna be hidden underneath our weave. There we go. And now we just have to pull our slack through. So keep on pulling this down until it gets to the other end. So now that our Manny method is complete, we just want to fold our cord in half 
right at the joint and then offset that by just a little bit. Then we're gonna take this and put it down through the buckle end, so not the D-ring end, but we're just gonna cow hitch it on. And I'm gonna be lazy and take mine off and then bring it over the top of my buckle. Just like that. And then we'll go down to our D-ring end and do the same thing in each one of our cords but we'll be tying the cow hitch in the end of the cord rather than the middle, so it's a little bit more complicated to tie. We'll do the blue first. We'll bring it down through the D-ring. Pull all the end through. Then bring it over the top. Find our end again. And come up through the middle for going underneath that stripe going across the top. Now we'll pull our slack through. And it should tighten down about like this. We'll be using this step a couple times as we set up the rest of this. So pull your cord tight on that one. And then we'll move on and do the same thing with our red cord. Now that those two are done and pulled tight, we'll go back to our buckle end and do two more. So once our setup is done, it should look about like this. We've got three cow hitches on this side and that fills out our one inch buckle nicely. And on the other end, we only have the two cow hitches. We wanna make sure that all four cords are pulled tight. That's another benefit of doing this on a jig is that all of these are gonna be the same length as long as they're pulled tight. We don't want one to have a lot of slack in it once we get going. So in my opinion, the hardest part is now done, and now we're just going to do the typical square knot or cobra weave over the top. This is a two layer knot. We go down once and then go back the other direction right over the top of it, and we call that a king cobra. I'm going to start by putting one cord over the top, and I want that to be my reflective burgundy because that's the cord that's going to be shown the most on the top side. On the back side, it's reversed. So I've got my burgundy over the top. I'm going to take my midnight blue and go over that, around the back, and up through this loop. And we'll pull all of our extra cord through. If you're making a long collar, it might be a good idea to hank up your cord that's pulled through. So we'll tighten that down at the top, about like that. And then we're going to do the same thing, but the sides are reversed. So burgundy over the top again, midnight blue over that, around the back, and through. And that's really all there is to this knot. We're just going to keep on going back and forth, repeating that down the length of the collar. So there, our first layer is done. Normally on a cobra weave, I would squish my weave together a little bit more and pull this up, fit as many more knots as I can on here. But on the king cobra, I found that that really isn't necessary and it can make the second layer harder. So at this point, we're gonna flip the jig around. Just a little bit of stuff to keep in mind here as we're doing our second layer. One is that we're gonna start with the same cord as the first layer, so that reflective is gonna go over the top again. And now as we make our first knot, you'll notice that it tightens down kind of right into the grooves of the first knot. This can take a little bit of troubleshooting to get right, but you should know by your second or third knot whether you're doing it right. You should be able to see that each bump of the blue on our second layer is going right in between the bumps of the blue on our first layer. So that's just gonna make it nice and even all the way down. If you don't get that right at the beginning, it can end up looking pretty uneven. So there we are, we've finished off our King Cobra. We can take it off of the jig now and finish up our ends. But to finish ours off, we're just gonna do as we normally do and clip it right where it's at. So I just go 
about an eighth of an inch away from my weave and that is plenty to melt. Just make sure that last knot is tied good and tight first. Melt the end, hold it near the flame, not necessarily in, and then while it's still hot, push it against your weave. So now we'll do it with our blue. Just melt it good and then use the metal part of the lighter, preferably, to push it against. And it should look about like that. So that's all there is to it. You can now put it on your dog or whatever animal of choice you have and cinch it down to the right size. And then if this is in the way, if there's too much of a tail end on there, we left it extra long so that it works with a variety of dogs. But you can just clip that with the scissors. You know, leave a little bit of extra room in case your dog grows if it's a puppy. But clip that across and then melt that with the lighter too. You just wanna make sure that you keep the lighter moving to get an even melt. There we go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Sorry it's taken so long to get this tutorial out and for this webbing strap to be put up in our store. We wanted to get it right and make sure it has top quality hardware so it can stand up to the biggest of dogs. If you're not in need of such a heavy duty collar, we're also working on a lighter duty version that is a half inch wide. That would be great for smaller cats and dogs. So hopefully by the time this video goes out, that's up in our store as well. So keep an eye out for the links in the description. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you next time.